This is going to be a study on the word whirlwind. We're going to look at the word whirlwind in the Bible and see some things it's associated with and primarily see how it's associated with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, we're going to look at whirlwind and fury. The fury of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalms 58, 9 through 10, it says, Before your pots can fill the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So this is undoubtedly a prophetic reference to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with a whirlwind connected to it. In verse 9, he seems to come out of heaven with a whirlwind. And that will follow right along with him and take them all away in his wrath, as the verse said. So it's associated with the fury of the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice in Psalms 58.10, it said, He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, connecting this verse with a verse in Revelation chapter 14.20 that's talking about the second coming, where it says, And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So when the Lord comes back on a white horse, he will thresh the heathen, and it will be like stomping grapes, and he will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So this is going to be a real foot washing. Uh, they would refuse to wash the Lord Jesus Christ's feet, so he's going to do it forcibly. Uh, he's going to take the kingdom by force. Proverbs 10.25 says, As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. So, probably another prophetic reference to the Lord consuming the Antichrist. Notice it says, So is the wicked no more. Probably referring to the Antichrist and his henchmen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 calls him that wicked. He's that wicked one in the Bible. And it says, Then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. And in Proverbs 10.25, As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous and everlasting foundation. So the Lord Jesus Christ is going to consume the Antichrist as he comes down out of heaven with a whirlwind associated with it at the second coming. Now look at Isaiah 5, 28 through 30. It says, Whose arrows are sharp, and all their bows bent. Their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. So once again, whirlwind associated with the second coming their roaring shall be like a lion they shall roar like young lions yea they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver it and in that day notice the phrase in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea and if one look into the land behold darkness and sorrow and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof so the lord is a man of war and in that day, he's coming to take over. Uh, he's going to bring in peace, but he will bring it in with a sharp two-edged sword. And notice that last verse I read, Isaiah 5.30, said the phrase, in that day. Every time you see that phrase, in that day or in those days, it's a prophetic reference to the time of Jacob's trouble and other future events and mainly the second coming. It said, their wheels like a whirlwind. So once again, the word whirlwind is in the context with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a time of fury when the Lord is going to let loose about 6,000 years of wrath on man. And Isaiah 40 and verse 24 says, Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. So really, tornadoes are just a picture of God's wrath on man. A tornado in this life can be a very frightening thing. The sounds, the darkness, the alarms going off, the wind obviously blowing and knocking down houses and making people not able to stand. 
And the Bible says in Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So that storm comic book character is nothing but a cheap counterfeit of the power of the Lord. And he has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. The second coming will be the finale of God's disaster movie. Everybody loves disaster movies, but this time it will be a reality. And how would you like the fury of the Holy One, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be on you with a whirlwind coming for you in the end of time? Isaiah 41, 16 says, Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 19, Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. Notice, whirlwind and fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. So a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. It's going to fall on the head of the wicked. And the devil gets his head knocked off all the way through the book. I can't handle him and you can't handle him. But the Lord can handle him. And he rebukes him. He, he gets his head knocked off through Sisera and the book of Judges. Through Goliath and, and back in Samuel. Through Calvary when the cross was stabbed in the place of the skull. You ever thought about that? And he'll get his head knocked off. When the Antichrist gets a deadly head wound. So God's fury will fall on the head of the wicked. So a whirlwind is associated with fury. Isaiah 66, 15 says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So you see in this verse, the whirlwind associated with fury but number two, it's also associated with fire, with flames of fire. So that's what we're going to look at now, the whirlwind and fire. As you know, the second coming is associated with fire. In 2 Thessalonians 1.8, it says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this whirlwind is associated with the same fire that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amos 1.14 says, But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Reba, and shall devour the palaces thereof with shouting, and the day of battle with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Isaiah 66.15, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So there you have fury, fire, whirlwind the Lord Jesus Christ all in the same verse and the Lord is coming back with ten thousands of his saints as the book of Jude says as the book of Deut Deuteronomy said and we're coming down through the clouds every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him his eyes are like a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace he'll be clothed with the vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God the Bible says he's going to smite them in their hinder parts. As you read in the book of Psalms. And that's equivalent to saying he's going to kick their hind end. But nothing hurts worse than burning. And the whirlwind is associated with fire. I saw videos of those poor people in California driving through the flames of the wildfires. And I thought to myself that this will be nothing like the fire of the second advent. That's mixed with the blood and ten thousands of horses' blood, and that's stomping men in a whirlwind. Did you know you can have fire tornadoes? Look it up if you don't believe me. But imagine the biggest tornado in history mixed with the biggest fire in history. It's like something out of a disaster movie, but much worse because the whirlwind is associated with his fury, with his fire, and next you'll see with fear. So look at the whirlwind and fear in Proverbs one twenty six and 27. It says, I also will laugh at your calamity. 
I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Notice that God laughs at their calamity. And that's a side of God that Andy Stanley won't preach. That's a side of God that Rob Bell and Rick Warren won't preach. They have another Jesus, not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Uh, Jeremiah twenty-five thirty-two through 33 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. And what a fearful thing it will be, so much that men will be hiding in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And men are already building these luxurious underground bunkers that they're going to hide in, but they're forgetting that there's going to be an earthquake, and they shall not escape. The slain of the Lord will be from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. The Lord can travel this world quicker than Santa Claus ever thought about doing. And it said the men will be as dung upon the earth. And they're really worth, worth less than that. Uh, we were all worth less than that. It's only by the grace and mercy of God that we could be saved because we aren't worth the bullet that it would take to kill us. But man is worth less than dung. But what is man that thou art mindful of him? Why is God mindful of us? You need to get in the Lord Jesus Christ or you're going to be on the receiving end of this fury. Jeremiah 20 or Jeremiah 30 and verse 23. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. So the Lord will bruise the head of the serpent at the second advent. And that's why Paul said in the book of Romans, Romans 16, 20, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. But notice it hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen here directly. It's going to be pretty soon that the Lord is going to bruise Satan under your feet shortly. He's going to be bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And this whirlwind, as you have seen, is associated with the Lord's fury, with flames, with fear. And next, we're going to look at the whirlwind in a far country. In the Bible, when it says far country, it's many times talking about heaven. And from my own personal study of the word whirlwind, it seems to be like a gateway to and from heaven. and seems to also let men get a message from the Lord. In Ezekiel 1 4, it says, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. Notice Ezekiel is going to see the Lord on a throne, and cherubims in Ezekiel chapter 1, he's, he sees visions of God, and all this stuff is associated with a whirlwind. But not only does Ezekiel get shown something from God in a whirlwind, the Lord also talks to Job out of a whirlwind. In Job 40, in verse 6, it says, Then the Lord answered, Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Same thing in Job 38, 1, it says, Then the Lord answered out of the whirlwind, and said. So, the Lord's talking through the whirlwind. He's showing Ezekiel things through the whirlwind. Uh, the Bible says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So maybe tornadoes are the Lord's way of getting a message to man that he could rattle their cage if he wanted to. For everything that's invisible, you have something that's visible. Second Kings 2.11 says, and it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now notice the whirlwind was associated with Elijah's entrance into heaven. And I assume it's the third heaven, with Elijah and Enoch being exceptions to the rule in the Old Testament, because the Old Testament saints went to paradise when they died. But this shows us that if you're right with God, you really don't have to worry about the whirlwind. 
it, it seemed to be in a negative light other than when it was talking to Job and Ezekiel and God's people. So that shows me we don't have to fear the whirlwind. If you're if you're saved, you're right with God, then there, there's really no need to worry about anything. And this sounds a little cliche because six out of ten sermons are about getting through a storm. But it's true that if God be for you, who can be against you? And if you're right, right with God, you'll come out good on the other side of every storm because all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are the called according to His purpose. And that's speaking of when it's all said and done. Where really everything bad that happens to you in this life doesn't matter. And if you have the peace of God which passes all understanding, then the world isn't going to bother you too much. But this has just been a quick study on the word whirlwind in the King James Bible.